Hey guys, welcome to the Prep and Preacher. It's Memorial Day 2021. Uh, welcome to the channel. I hope God is truly blessing you. We're going to talk about the number one threat that's facing America right now. Stay tuned. <laughs> Preacher Channel. I'm so glad you're here. I'm hoping God is truly blessing you today. Um, first time here, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell down there. Uh, that way we can get our voice out. Guys, we are pro-God. We are uh, pro-country. We're pro-family. We're pro-Second Amendment, and uh, we just uh, stand on those convictions. Now, as I said on the beginning, this is Memorial Day weekend, folks. It ain't about a three-day weekend. It isn't about hamburgers or hot dogs. It's about the people that have died in your stead, that uh, shed their blood so that you can enjoy the freedoms that you and I both have. And to them, I salute. Uh, God bless you uh, for what they've done for this country. But number one threat facing America today. Now, this is not a doom and gloom, uh, but it's a rally cry. In my quiet time this morning, uh, it just it got laid on my heart. What is the number one threat to America right now? You know, some may say it's China. Some say Russia. Some say the border. Uh, terrorism. I mean, civil unrest, the leftist propaganda and, and their politics. Uh, it could be an EMP people are looking at. could be pandemic. Uh, maybe what the government says, white supremacy. Uh, I'm, I'm still looking for my uh, uh, white privilege card. I hadn't found it yet. Uh, <clears throat> I believe the number one threat right now that we're facing, brothers and sisters, is the economy. If anything 2020 showed us is you shut down the economy, well, you're going to shut down a country. And we're still uh, reaping the uh, effects of that right now. And folks, we're in hyperinflation, whether you realize it or not. Now, the government is telling us that, well, it, it has jumped up, but it's only at like four and a half percent. But uh, I got numbers. I pulled some numbers in, and, and I don't see the 4.5%. Now, I'm not an economic uh, professor, nor do I play one on TV, but numbers don't lie. And, guys, when I start looking at, at like, these numbers I'm going to put up here on the screen, like silver is up 45% since June of last year. Uh, gold's up 9.78%. Uh, we You know, and then drop down there, soybeans, 80.5%. Uh, corn. Uh, is is up let me see here we got a hundred percent uh well you may say well you don't eat any soybeans or you don't eat any corn well but the the animals that you eat the meat the protein you eat uh they do and so it's going up i mean uh you can see that feeder cattle is up 11 uh, percent uh, i mean oats up 11 percent now lumber man that's just ballistic 272 percent and you're seeing that and they're always blaming this on the covid well folks it ain't just the covid that's affecting this right here uh there's a, quite a few things that are hitting it and see hyperinflation doesn't happen overnight uh it's a gradual effect like putting a frog in the water well you turn the heat up a little more a little more a little more and you get used to it now if they bump the gas prices they're running around three dollars right now on this uh, uh holiday weekend uh a gallon around our area uh but if you bump it up to say six dollars from three to six well people are going to freak out but if it goes up a dime and it goes up a nickel and it goes up a dime well they get used to it now it's less money in their pocket but they get used to it and you see gasoline is up 50 51 percent right there uh and you're seeing that in your uh when you go fill up your gas tank uh diesel diesel has been affected 35 36 percent well, you say, well, I don't have a diesel vehicle. Yeah, but everything you got comes by way of a truck and rail, and they use diesel. And so that price is coming down to us. We're going to see it. Now, there were just some of the numbers now. So first question is why? Well, as I said, COVID had an effect on us. Uh, they did. Uh, there were people out of work. They were shutting down companies, shutting down whole cities and towns and, and states. Uh, and that has a great effect. But also, uh, we see the current administration. Uh, oh, Joe ain't never seen a giveaway that he didn't like. Uh, he makes Bernie Sanders look like an ultra conservative with the, some of the programs he's got going on. Folks, we've been giving away the country 
<laughs> one trillion at a time. Uh, unemployment, we're paying people not to work and people can't get in there and get a job, uh, you know, won't go in and work, excuse me. Uh, they're staying home and making more money. And I heard somebody say, well, I can't fault them for it. Well, I can because God said that uh, you got to work to eat. Uh, I remember uh, coming out of the military, first uh, degree that I worked for, man, I was taking every odd job I could. I worked in Chinese restaurants for $5 an hour. I worked loading trucks for $6 an hour. I was going to take care of my family no matter what it took. I would leave school and go to work and come home about 11 o'clock, study, go back to school by 7.30. Uh, and, and again, I'm not sitting here talking about how I had to walk 10 miles to school, but I'm saying uh, if you're more than able to get up and work, then you go out and you work and you make a living. Now, here's the thing. I realized real quick I didn't want to keep making $6 an hour loading mail trucks. Uh, that's why I went to school. That's why I got some marketable talents so I could make uh, more money. Uh, and so that's why I was going to school uh, to be an engineer. And, you know, now I'm a pastor, but I went to school. Uh, instead of trying to pay people $15 an hour for, for flipping a burger, how about they get some skills that are worth at least $15 an hour? I mean, it just makes perfect sense. I mean, the companies can't keep uh, paying for this because we're going to refuse to pay for it. Like McDonald's or Burger King. We're going to eat home if it's going to cost me $20 to get a Big Mac or some uh, chicken nuggets, guys. Uh, so, yeah, this unemployment is nuts. And I'm glad a lot of the states are, are pulling that out. Um, that caused it. Uh, what about this? Uh, the moratorium that they have uh, on the rent and the, and the, uh, and the excuse me, the uh, foreclosures. Well, there's still a moratorium and people saying, well, you can't buy a house. People are paying $40,000, $50,000 over the ass price to get it. Well, yeah, because the natural way of things of people that buy too much house or people that get in financial uh, problems uh, and they get evicted uh, or they get foreclosed on, well, they haven't been foreclosed on in over a year now. Now that ends the end of June. It's going to be interesting what happens when that ends. Uh, student loans, they've been put on hold. Uh, all interest, all payments, uh, collections of them have been put on hold till September. Okay, here you go. This is all and, and this is all adding up. Somebody's going to pay for it. Uh, and, and, the people, and now they're talking about taxing uh, the rich. That's what they always love. Uh, Warren and Bernie and everybody talking about taxing the rich. Well, guys, you tax the rich you're going to pay for it. And, and I'm, let me explain what's going on here. I ain't never got a job from a poor man. I've got a job from a man that had some money and, and had some initiative and had a company. Uh, never got money for uh, a job, excuse me, from a poor man. And so here we are. The current budget, they're talking $6 trillion. I love what Ted Cruz said. Ted Cruz said, please don't tell the Democrats what's over a trillion. Amen. Uh, that's just, that's just mind blowing. They're, Here's the thing, $6 trillion, and it's probably more than that. Uh, that's just what the press wants to report. But there's only $1.5 trillion bills, you know, these things, that are in circulation. $1.5 trillion that is in circulation. And they're talking $6 trillion. They're, what they're doing is they're printing money without a printing press. Uh, these are zeros and ones. This is on the computer is what they're doing. Put that money back before it blows away. Amen? But... They're, they're sitting there printing more and more and more. Um, when I was overseas back in the 80s, uh, in Germany, they still had to mark. The euro wasn't even thought about. And it was over four marks per dollar. I could get four of their dollars for one of my dollars. Got some great buys on some stuff. Uh, bought, brought some Puma knives home. Love them. And I paid a quarter of what they were paying for them with my money. People would get their money put into American currency. Why? Because it was stable and it was worth something. Venezuela, same deal. Uh, they'll get paid in, in, in their currency, which right now they won't even, I think, take uh, any money. There were some riots going on in some of the cities there in Venezuela that stores wouldn't take any bill under 50,000 uh, of their money because it was only worth about two cents of our money. But people used to put their money in our money. But it's not going to be anymore because we're printing so much. We're putting so much out there. And let me explain it. Let me give you kind of an illustration. I love to collect charade knives. And I come across a deal uh, of a charade knife. And I love this buoy. This is an NRA buoy. Uh, and what, what, what can't you love, man, with the flag and the eagles and all. And this is a one out of 950. And mine, mine is uh, number 905 out of 950. Okay, that knife right there 
is a rarity. There's only 950 of them in existence. So it's worth more than if there was a million of them made. But the same thing with our dollars. They're going to go down. Uh, we can just look at how inflation is already hitting. Uh, it's already in other countries. And folks, the numbers I just showed you, I'll put them back up there. The numbers I just showed you, they're going up. They're going up. It's a steady climb up. So I've given you some of the bad news. What do we do? Well, I'm glad you're here. You're doing the first thing. You're trying to get information. Folks, the best weapon you've got against anything is your mind to think logically, to think practical. And, uh, and then number two, tangible, tangible assets. And we're going to get into that. I'm going to be doing a few series here uh, going through this, but this has just been laid on my heart, man. We have got to stay in the gap and stand there uh, and say no more. But we've got to take care of our families. If you don't take care of your family, you're worse than an infidel. And so we're going to start off. We're going to be looking at tangible assets uh, when we come back. Uh, so stick around. I'll have another video coming out as soon as possible. But until then, again, if you're new here, hit the subscribe button. Hey, and I want to give a shout out to all you guys that are that are uh, that have been hitting me uh, with the comments and the likes and all uh, and the subscriptions. Thank you for the love. We are getting our voice out there. Uh, but uh, again, until I see you again. I pray God may richly bless you. You'll continue to stand in that gap. This is the Prepping Preacher. I'm out of here.